Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Uh, Dr. Ruben, thank you for joining us. Hi, OJ, good to see I you. I missed you on the first half of well, the Well, I mean, I, I got head up on the way. My apologies, All you right. know. Uh, it was the day the devil came to town. There was an accident <laughs> on Ted Milan Bridge, oh, and no. then there was rainfall, and everything just, uh, you know, went bad. Well, glad that Sorry you're here. Sorry about that, yeah. Our guest is a trained economist and risk manager. He was honored as an icon of hope by former Nigerian President Olusha Gombasinjo on October 1st, 2002 for his sustained pioneering effort in the area of information technology and also as a pride to modern Nigeria. He has a record of incisive entrepreneurship and his vision to computerize Nigeria has reshaped the history of information technology in the third world. Here to discuss the e-commerce space in Nigeria, which is currently worth around $13 billion, with experts predicting a rise in value to $50 billion over the next decade, and one of the largest e-commerce mergers by his company, Udala's acquisition of Conga, is the chairman and chief executive officer at Zynos Technologies Limited, Liu Stan Eke. Welcome to the morning show. Good Thank morning. You very much. <laughs> Good to see you. you. We have a long time. You've been in this business. You're a pioneer. And obviously, you've done very well uh, since 2001 when uh, you established Zynos Technologies Limited. How has the journey been? Yeah, we're tough in an analog economy, um, but it's encouraging. Uh, well, I didn't start 2001. Okay. I entered the information technology business as far back as 1987. Really? Yes. That was but when it was I launched, 2001 that we all had about Yeah, you. that's when I launched a local brand. But remember, I encourage people like Microsoft, uh, Apple, um, Hilly Packard, I brought them into the country. And this happened um, as early as um, early 90s. Wow. OK. Um, so I've been driving a vision. But Zionists came on board because um, a, a country without technology independence has no independence, actually, in 21st century. Mm. So this is right. why uh, we decided to launch Zionists. Well, I know Zionists uh, came to the market with the Zynos computers. And at that time, you had a campaign about, you know, uh, Nigerians making use of the computer. Uh, where do you think we are now, uh, at that time and now? Because you still use the word analog. Many Nigerians will say, no, we've gone digital. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, it was received very well by the president then and Nigerians. And we've done a tremendous work. Um, we, we, we've changed the educational system to a large extent. Um, we deployed you know, technology with human face. Uh, like, you know, the INEC without Zynox. Okay, today you would have had multiple cases. Mm. Okay, but we're redefining, we did the biometrics. Okay, they all use Zynox. Okay, we designed a system. And not just in this country, we've done in Guinea-Bissau. We did the election in Guinea-Bissau. Right, in about 20 West African countries, yes, right? Yes, right. So 20 African, African countries. countries. So we, we, we're doing a whole lot. It's not just the technology, but the confidence and the culture. Okay, until you create a digital culture, you don't have a country in 21st century. And this is why the young Anambra girls who just won uh, Technovation, okay, a global award, is a success because somebody created it. I remember when uh, one night Peter woke me up about 1 a.m. and he wanted 25. Who is this Peter? Peter will be the former governor, former of, governor of the Anambra. State. And he wanted 25,000 computers integrated with applications. Okay. Well, I made sure they paid me. He, he was courageous enough to pay me up front, and we deployed. So today you can see the report. That is the single largest structured technology deployment in the country, outside a few governments uh, doing through NCC and uh, USPF. So today we have seen the result. So that's the biggest brand the nation has today. Wow. Okay. So you don't want. I, I, I'm sure we don't know their parents. You understand? But those kids have become global brands. So, oh, yes. So they become that. a strong IT identity for Nigeria. And if those guys were in the stock market, because today's stock market is all about knowledge and hope, mm. okay, they will be oversubscribed. Mm. So this is why you must use technology to compete. Okay? It's no more on um, commodities. It's today knowledge. And that's what this, those kids displayed. Okay, they are not Americans, they are not from England, they are not from Japan. They are Nigerians. And if I'm from a timid uh, 
considered local area in Nigeria. But isn't, isn't the Anambra success story an isolated case? I mean, you talked about taking computers to schools. Uh, what would be your assessment of computer penetration within the education system in Nigeria? Yeah, the yes. government hasn't invested courageously in the educational system. And this is the big challenge in the country, okay? Until you build enough human capital, the present company, existing companies cannot survive. So talk about expansion. So the unemployment is typically created because we don't have the right human capital. And we have a university system that produces almost one million analog graduates every year. Okay, and how much does it cost? A billion, a billion dollar put into the educational system will turn out with kids who are entrepreneurs and people who secure jobs, but they have a future tomorrow. So today, down the road there, I develop a program which Microsoft is sponsoring with me. So we have the best 100 Nigerians who passed through a funnel and passed. We are, we are, we are sponsoring them 100%, no school fees. What is this program called? Uh, it's a, we, we call it a digital innovation. Okay. So those kids are being certified and 100 of them can get jobs anywhere in the world. Okay, at the moment, because I have a background, I'm losing a lot of stuff to Germany, Australia, South Africa, okay? And the kind of pay packages they give them, even if it's your enemy, you will tell him to go. Okay, so the country can find itself as a platform to civilize other countries. And the only way you can do it is not through commodities, through technology. Okay. Well, I, I, I know you are doing very well in ICT solutions, and you have many clients across Africa. But how are you doing with designers computer brand, considering that these days you can get second-hand laptops, you can get, or how is designers computer doing? We, we, we're doing very well. I mean, the factory, yesterday, uh, Sunday, I had to inspect a new factory in, in Ogwa. Okay, we're doing a total space of about 165,000 square feet. Okay, we are looking at bringing artificial intelligence. So the factory I'm, we are going to launch, we are delayed right now. In fact, we were working even yesterday, construction guys. Uh, we must launch by October. You understand? So that's increasing the plan. But also we are integrating the plan for Samsung. You understand? Because there's a process. Technology does not lie. So if you get it right, you got it. that's part of what Africa is suffering. If you under invest, you die. Okay, so by, by October, we should be launching a modern plant, integrated modern plant. Okay, uh, this is what we're doing. So we are, we are confident of tomorrow, and we are doing a whole lot at the moment. We are very, very busy. Okay. Talking about investment, I know that your company bought over Conga, and it's not only just launching an online platform, it's also going to have the retail sector um, to that. Is that correct? Okay, can you tell us more about that? Now you do. Know, Konga is a technology company like Amazon. Yes. Today, Amazon owns huge digital space in the global market. They own the biggest cloud. But it wasn't, people thought they were retailers. Mm -hmm. Now, about 13 years ago, I pioneered the first e-commerce in, um, in Africa. It was called BuyRide Africa. What was it called? BuyRide Buy right Africa. Africa. BuyRide Africa. Okay. I launched it, but it was too early. I forgot the economy was analog. Right. There was no debit card, no credit card. So who am, how was that supposed to sell to people? So I tried it for about one and a half years, struggled, I shut it down. So when my son came out of university at 23, uh, he, want, he was good in music. And I, I told him, I said, okay, look here, what else? He now talked about e-commerce, that he wanted to better what I did and failed. But he added offline. Offline at the retail store, the physical retail store. So I encouraged him, he launched the first e commerce, composite e commerce in Africa. Okay, and then he tried to use a drone. He did a first drone test. Mm. Okay, by delivering the first order by drone, which was successful. Wow, very okay. impressive. Uh, so, but you know, you have structural problems in the country. Right. So, Udala did very well, but I was anticipating the future. Okay, so when there was an opportunity, uh, Conga invested huge money. Remember, I didn't buy, we didn't buy Conga from Nigerians. Okay. How much did you pay for it? Because uh, that remains a mystery. It, it You've not a, disclosed it. It remains a mystery as an investor. You don't tell the whole story public. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> I mean, we want to know. <laughs> it's, um, I'm keeping it with um, NASPARS and Kennebec. I mean, I'm sure you know. Yeah. NASPARS sold 
invested here about 160 something million dollars just to tell you the capacity of e-commerce and what Nigeria is suffering. Mm. Two months after they sold to us, they sold 2%. They own 30% of 10 cents in China. They sold 2% at $9.8 billion. They still own 28%. So this is the magic, the miracle of technology. Mm. And they invested, I'm sure, 100%, less than 20 million. Mm. But 2% today, they sold for 9.8. They still own 28%. Now, so what we are trying to do is anticipate the future, create a bigger market. Konga employs, has the biggest technology department in this country, even among banks. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we're upgrading that. And as I talk to you, they have about seven expatriates sent in by Microsoft. So they are changing the technology, the culture, mm -hmm. okay, of the country, the buying culture of the country. Okay, so Conga is also rolling out a whole lot of. Um, I think this month alone they are launching seven new stores. But is there any plan eventually to merge Conga and Udala? We are merging. So already. that you have. Technically, seamless. operations would yes. merge. So okay. all the Udala stores, I'm sure you see them now branded Kunga. Okay. Okay. But most importantly, uh, the earlier e-commerce companies was more of hype. You need to put a lot of content based on the culture of the country where you exist, because America is not Nigeria. You understand? Here, there's no trust. Okay. There are a lot of unemployed people who are depressed. They place orders. You take it to them. They don't even open the door. You understand? And two, if your platform is known for fake products, because a lot of people are selling online at the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So the power of Conga is that Conga has marketplace, he has offline. You understand? So it does it. Conga, Conga is on this street. So you want to rush down and take yes. your goods. So mm -hmm. let's say you are busy today, you can place your order, and when you're back home, you call them, they deliver it to you. That's very important. Okay, or you walk in and pick it. What was the motivation behind the uh, creation of offline stores? Is it culture? Because yeah, culture. many Nigerians, they like well, to walk in, touch things, and feel those things. They, want to, they want to say it, okay? Yeah. Yes. And if the store is very close to you, yeah. you take some decision. Let's say you don't have the data, and you need something on Konga, you walk into the store there, and they place the order for you, okay? okay? And deliver it to you. Yeah. And let's say you walk into the store, they don't have it in the store. Okay, you place the order, pay for it, they deliver it to you. But how do you address the challenge of online fraud for the online transaction? This because is, that's a big issue. Mm -hmm. And there doesn't seem to be uh, uh, legislation to deal with that. Yes. Online yes, fraud. It's part of the country problem. Mm -hmm. The country's problem is not just infrastructure. You understand? The judiciary, okay, I mean, which is the legal system. You have multiplicity of it, but with, with technology, you resolve every problem. Okay. We have people, we are chasing one of them right now. Okay, we get them because we invested in technology. If you are deficient in technology, you can't do any business. Okay, cool. so successful. with Nigeria, with our over 180 million people, only 62% of uh, people that use the mobile de device are youth, right? Correct? And so how can you tell me about the traction? Or, and is this really going to um, penetrate through the mass audience? Um, <laughs> because I don't, I don't see that happening anytime you soon. You know, you don't have option. Yes. You, that's why I use the words anticipate. Okay. Okay. Why businesses die is that they live their, they, they, they exist during their generation. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm 62 and above, but I've been in this IT business, I'm possibly the biggest in the subcontinent for 32 years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm too old to be in this business, but this is what gives me, you know, a lot of excitement. I've so, never heard that before. I'm too old to be in this. Yeah. In technology business, you have an age, you must exit. Okay. Okay. So we are technically handing over, but what is the next big business? The biggest business in the world, I'm sure you saw Jeff Retton. Mm -hmm. There's no oil company owner, no bank owner that right. is richer than him in the world. Mm -hmm. He emerged last year and he's scaling up at 50%. You understand every year. I mean, Amazon will hit a trillion before the end of this year. I thought it will arrive before Apple. You understand what I'm saying? So that's the biggest business. So don't look at e-commerce basically as mobile phones, computing. Okay, we are delivering everything. There are a few things Conga will launch within the next two years. Sorry, within the next two months. Okay, it will define the market. 
they are investing a whole lot of money on infrastructure. Okay. Okay. First of April, they are launching Abuja warehouse. So if you're in Abuja, you can get delivery the same day. Are you with me? Outside, there are multiple stores. And they are launching a massive warehouse mm -hmm. in Port Harcourt, opposite GE. You understand? So you need to put this infrastructure okay. with technology. How together. are you doing with your competitors like Jumia and um, GG? Well, you know, I'm not running Conga and I'm not the chairman of Conga, but I, it's something of interest. Yeah. I supported Jumia. Okay. You understand? I support all companies to exist, like I support all resellers. Okay. In my group, I have a 13 billion. I use an extending credit to all computer companies. So if you have a computer contract in this country, I'll help you fund it. Wow. Okay. So if you have any reseller in the ICT business, they will tell you they have a credit rating. Okay, and it's digital. Okay, what is the criteria to apply for this? Um... You must have a computer company. Okay. You must have a knowledge. So even if you don't have a knowledge, your brother does here a favor. Okay, I was here a contract. I want to make sure that job is done and done properly. Where mergers and acquisitions are not necessarily stories with happy endings, what are your biggest fears? In the IT business? In the e-commerce business, with this merger that you just went into, uh, because it's, it's not necessarily foolproof yes, that the merger will succeed. You know, it's seamless. Okay, it's like a teacher not teaching, sorry, teaching what he doesn't know. And if you understand this business and you wrote the script, okay, you will dance very well. Um, when you merge in technology, there are early inconveniences because you are bringing different staff from different companies, but. In another two months, you resolve it. But remember, the power of Conga is that they own the largest logistics. Conga has the massive technology and logistics, okay? And they own Conga Pay, licensed by Central Bank. Okay, so today you can leave your money with them. If you have a ward in Imo State who is studying there, you have a wallet, okay? You leave the deposit, the kid withdraws when he likes. And you buy something, they deliver to you and they de debit you. And if you're selling, okay, you could be a merchant on Conga. If you have something to sell, yes. but we insist it must be genuine. That's the pride of Conga. Conga does not say fake. Well, let and me go back find to, a fake, we destroy it. Let me go back to Zynos because we don't have more time. You say you give credits to other companies. Not Zynos, one of the companies in the group. Technology the company, distribution, which well, is the biggest it, ICD distribution in the country. It's a group, right? Yeah. Yeah, is this a strategy of dominance, of even controlling the competition? So that you remain dominant no. and in control okay. because you seem to be the only <laughs> no 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 i'm not really the only the only people competing with me are foreigners and they are 20 percent my size in this country but they are like 500 percent my size globally mm. okay but i understand the country this is where i have my passion i'm not doing all your business i started technology and i needed to take it to a level now a lot of people are negative about supporting competitors the market won't grow you understand? Yeah, now, but you if, can support them and control them, and you remain dominant. No, I don't control them. The system a distribution company does, it's, there's an interface between a distribution company and the manufacturer, the OEM. So the reseller gets pricing from the OEM, then I fulfill it. But we want to make sure genuine products are delivered in the country. Okay? So why I fund them, if you go to the bank today, 90% of them can't get credit. So how are they going to deliver the project? The federal government will buy the, they will buy the budget and buy cars or build buildings. So if the market, it's better I take 10% of the global market than take of a large sum than take 100% okay, of a very small market. So you compete with me, but we're all growing the market because you have your segment, I have my segment. So who survives tomorrow? takes the global market, and that's what we're, that's the strategy. So my interest is to grow the market. That's why I started donating digital, um, uh, digital studios to school. Because if they don't have knowledge, they won't use it. And if they're not using it, I don't have a future business. You can't be talking about e-commerce. Well, just before we let you go, I see you've, you've been uh, honored a lot. You've received a lot of awards, uh, honorary uh, doctorates from UniJaws, from uh, Federal University of Agriculture, Federal University of Technology, from everywhere. Are you into philanthropy? Because, I mean, you should give back. I give back silently because I'm not a politician. Okay. okay. Um, it's a spiritual commitment. And nice. um, I focus on education. I focus on health. Okay. I focus also on spirituality. Okay. Because until people believe in God, mostly in Africa, 
uh, they don't seem to have a future. Okay, but I do it privately. It's not political. We don't well, recognize about it. Great pleasure having you Thank on the you program, so uh, Mr. Uh, Newstan AK. I've much. been highly inspired by Thank you. <laughs> and for the benefit of our, of our viewers, Liu Stan is Leonard Stanley uh, Nambi, Nambi uh, AK. AK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming on the Thank morning you show. Very much. Time now for a break on the morning show. When we return, we'll have Bume Abodering Talabi, the chairperson of Women in Management Business and Public Service, Wimbis, here to discuss what WIMBIS is doing to increase the percentage of women on boards. Stay with us.